Welcome back, everybody. Our title today, or our subject, is How to Gamble If You Must. Uh, it's, I swiped the title from a famous book by uh, Lester Dobbins and Leonard Savage, uh, which appeared at the beginning of the, uh, of the Bayesian Theoretical Resurgence, which was, I think, like 19... Oh, well, the 70s, the late 70s, anyway. The book, I think, came out in like 76, 77, something like that. Or before. Uh, th this is a movement, of course, which has by now infiltrated nearly all of academia. Uh, the next logical step, however, which is a pun, uh, on this road uh, to a fuller understanding of uncertainty is full-on logical probability. Academia is now far too distracted uh, with other events, as you well know, to venture down that road now. So this trip will be sometime in coming. Now, games of chance, so-called, are always logical. You can prove this to yourself uh, by picking up any undergraduate text and statistics. Uh, find the chapter on probability. You'll see examples like this. A die has a probability one-six of showing a six. Therefore, the probability of two die or one die thrown twice showing two sixes is one-six times one-six equals... 136. Well, that's the valid answer, of course, uh, uh, but an invalid or at least incomplete argument. And that's our subject, that argument that leads to that probability, which is the correct answer. Now, it's close enough, of course, because uh, of the implicit recognition that logic allowed us to deduce the probability of the die showing 1 sixth, which comes from the statistical syllogism. An object has six states, and only one of which must obtain. Therefore, the probability it is in any state is one-sixth. It has nothing to do with throwing or tossing or any of those things that ordinarily confuse the mind about dice throwing and probability. We're just talking about some state that can be in any one of, uh, well, in this case, six states, of some device, rather, that's in any one of six states. And the old, based on the statistical syllogism, and the probability that it's in any of them is one-sixth. And we don't have to say it's a fair device or any of that kind of nonsense. That just leads us in circles. Now, once that deduction is in hand, we can prove theories of what will happen to that die or, or object under any named scenarios, uh, now which come in two flavors with gambling. Simple gambles are those where the premises of the game allow us to deduce the probability, uh, probabilities of the events of interest. Uh, example, two sixes on two throws. Well, we did that one. Uh, a pair of jacks showing from a poker deck. Zero zero showing on an American roulette wheel. Three cherries showing on a slot machine, and so on, things like this. Casinos, of course, provide ample examples of these uh, simple, exam simple gambles. Complex gambles, on the other hand, are different from the simple ones because we cannot deduce the probability of the events of interest because they don't have them. And that's because uh, th we can't agree that uh, the premises for the, we cannot, that is to say, we cannot agree on all the premises of the gambles. Uh, so, for instance, what are the premises for these gambles, these following gambles. The person to my left, I, I, I hesitate and I'm talking there is because I realized when I was writing the script for this thing, I, I, I missed a little bit, what, which I, I, I said in my, uh, in my little speech here, which I recognized when I spoke it. And that's that events don't have probabilities. They, uh, any, nothing has a probability. It, probabilities are only assigned after we assign the premises and then we deduce the probabilities from those. At any rate, uh, complex gambles are those which we cannot agree on all the premises to the, uh, uh, of the gambles. Now, what are the premises for these gambles? For instance, the person to my left in this poker game holds a hand superior to mine. Horse A will win the race or at least come in third. Stock B will increase in price over the next week. Uh, the Detroit Tigers will win tomorrow's game. And so on. Now, we don't know the premises. Nobody knows. The ideal premises are those which give us the complete cause of each event. We haven't any idea how to get the complete cause or causes of such complex events. Uh, the best we can hope for, 
are maybe some causes and good correlations which recognize cause somewhere in the chain of causes of the event. Now, unless you're the owner of the casino or are a bookie, it is impossible to consistently, the key word is consistently, make money with simple gambles. Of course, you might on any individual one, but not consistently. You might, uh, but probably will not, consistently make money with complex gambles, unless you're really good at picking out premises. Now, here's why. Because all know all the relevant premises for simple gambles but you don't know them for complex, okay? Any casino game that does not involve the intelligences of other human beings can be analyzed as simple gambles. Uh, I think that's a true statement. I can't think of any casino game, because it doesn't prove there, there isn't one, but I can't think of any uh, casino game where we can't deduce the probabilities uh, as long as they don't involve the intelligence of other players. So for like uh, uh, roulette wheels or uh, uh, craps or any of the card games that are in casinos and so on. That means we can, without error, compute the probability of any outcome of any game, which we can call, just for the sake of giving it a letter, the letter A. The premise, the, 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 the proposition A, for example. A is, quote, the wheel shows red. The roulette wheel shows red. Okay. Uh, now we can calculate the probability of A given the premises of the gamble. We'll always know, given the properties and setup of the game, the probability A will be true because we know the premises. For ease, uh, call that we can call that the probability of A given the gamble premises, which I emphasize again, everybody knows. Well, or should know. You know, not every gambler <laughs> is savvy, but uh, these things are easy to look up. Now, it costs you D dollars to bet on A. And we got to do a little math here, friends. Not always the easiest thing. Just simple <laughs> multiplication and uh, subtraction here, but uh, we still have to do this math. Now, it costs you D dollars to bet on A, and you will win with probability of A given the gamble premises. And you'll be paid W dollars if A happens. Okay, so you're going to bet D, you're going to win W if A happens. And you can figure out the probability of A. The casino sets the required bet D so that it is more than W times the probability of A given the gamble premises. They do this on all simple gambles. Let me give you an example because that's maybe hard to understand without a chalkboard or something. And uh, I have to get one so that I can do videos of these things instead of just ramble on. But you get the idea, I think, in this example. It's on the website, too, if you, if you need uh, visual guidance. Here, here's that example. Now, A, a 7 shows on an American roulette wheel. Now, we could deduce that uh, the probability of A, given the gamble premises, is 130, 1 over 38. 1 uh, Because the numbers... 0 through 36 are on the wheel, and the symbol 0, 0 are on the wheel. So that's 38 separate symbols, one of which is 7. So the probability that it hits 1 over 7, given this gamble premises, is 138. Now it costs, for instance, I don't know what it costs, but uh, whatever. It depends on the table and all that kind of thing. But for instance, suppose it costs $1 to play. Now if you win, you're only going to receive $35. Sounds pretty good, but in this case, the winnings times the probability is 35 38 which, of course, is less than the $1 it costs to play. Now, on average, then, the casino takes in about $0.08 cents for every dollar bet, meaning you lose $0.08 cents on every single bet, on average. On average. Now, this on average is kind of a loose and goosey kind of a thing, but it is also a deduction given the gamble premises. We can calculate the exact probabilities of winnings for the casino given an assumed number of bets and amounts. The probability that the casino is in the black is nearly one for even a modest number of bets, though. So this on average, we don't need to take it in some bizarre frequentist sense or anything like that. No, we can calculate exact probabilities. And it's easy to show uh, with this kind of math, with these kind of uh, vig or vigorish that they're taking out, uh, the casinos are taking out, uh, they're, they're going to make a lot of money. 
even if, of course, on, and sometimes people are going to win these simple gambles, which they want. They want some people to win some of these simple gambles some of the time. If nobody ever won, uh, then nobody would, of course, ever go to the casino. So they want some of that, but they're not going to get it all the time. And they're not going to let you win too big either. So that if you want to make a career with simple gambles, you will go hungry. Uh, exceptions are games like blackjack where strategies exist to edge the bet in your favor. But that's because the dollar amount being less than the winning amount times the probability is not equivalent to the dollar amount being less than the winning amount times the probability of the event given the card sequence that, you, that you've that you noticed and the gamble premises. Those probabilities aren't the same. Indeed, the, the, it can be that the probability given you've seen the card sequences is greater for A or less than... Uh, than the probability of the event given just the gamble premises. Uh, for instance, in card counting schemes. If there's a single deck of cards, for instance, which is rare, but it happens for the, the people with the millions of dollars, and you've seen all the aces, aces have already been played, well, if you're paying attention or good at simple math, those probabilities won't match. And you can make money in those cases. But... Because casinos have more money than you, and politicians desire to have that money, casinos are able to buy laws that make these card-counting strategies illegal. Just as you go to Walmart uh, to purposely part with your cash, you are meant to go to a casino to lose money. Keep that in mind. Now, with all that being said, money can be and is made with complex gambles. That doesn't mean it's easy, only that it can be done. In simple gambles, everyone has the same information about the probabilities because they all have the same gambling premises. This isn't true in complex games, where to win, you need to have better information, better premises about the events than the person or persons betting against you. That is, the probability of my gam the probability of the event given my gamble premises need not uh, equal the probability of the event given your gamble premises, except only rarely when you and I agree on all premises, all, all. The word is strict, all, all premises, actual, tacit, and implicit, all three of the sets of premises, and that all three sets of these premises do exist, and often can scarcely be articulated is why probability is sometimes thought to be subjective, which it isn't. Because if we agree on all premises, we must necessarily agree on the probabilities. All right, back to these complex gambles. You know, you see these cigarette uh, guy, guys smoking cigarettes out in front of the OTB, the off-track betting in, uh, in New York. Well, they used to have these guys <laughs> all the time. I don't know if they're still there. I escaped uh, New York a couple of years ago. But uh, the guys who are sitting around that entrance, they're not just dosing themselves with nicotine. They're trying to gain an advantage in information by subtle probes of their compatriots. Now, brokers do exactly the same thing. They ponder quarterly reports and other information about stocks for the same reason and so on. It's all gambling. It's all gambling. Uh, but some of it's legal and some of it isn't. Problem is... Everyone else is trying to gain an edge at the same time you are, which usually means your information is not much better than the next person's. Plus, of course, in betting horse races in the stock market, there's those darn transaction fees. Tracks, of course, skim a percent off the top and set the payouts by the amounts bet, uh, making it extremely difficult to win money. Brokers and banks charge transaction fees, of course, which uh, cause the same difficulties. Well, uh, so besides bar bets, insider trading, and other forms of outright cheating, a gamble with uh, real potential is poker and its business equivalents, which depends on bluffing and the ability to detect it. Uh, being able to read the ticks and tells of others is a great skill, but uh, it's a rare talent and it's expensive to, to, to acquire. Same thing with betting the stock market. The lesson is uh, stay away from simple gambles. And only take the bets where you're sure of your information. That's it for this time. Thanks for listening.